director of Britain Stronger In. In an exclusive for the Sunday Politics, she talks to fellow campaign insiders about how the referendum was lost. We are absolutely clear now that there is no way that the Remain side can win. It looks as though it was a shock. Right up until the end, we thought that Remain could win. So how did we end up here? I'm Lucy Thomas, and I was deputy director of that campaign, and one of those that was there from the beginning. This is the story of what we did and why, but why, in the end, it wasn't enough. So let's go back to where it started. We launched Britain Stronger in Europe on a cold October morning last year, in this former brewery. Key the usual jokes about our organisation. We set out to persuade people that Britain was stronger, safer and better off in Europe than we would be out on our own, and that leaving was a leap in the dark, a risk we couldn't afford to take. As a nation of Eurosceptics, we always knew it would be tough, but I'm not sure we were prepared for what the early research showed. When we presented that and, and, and sat down and we discussed it with you and, and the team, I think everybody sort of gulped a bit and thought, God, this is going to be a bit harder than we thought. Good morning. Good morning. So we built a campaign based on numbers. It's the economy, stupid, and it had been proven to work in the Scottish referendum and the general election. But were numbers enough this time? I think one of the reasons why some of the, um, the specific warnings um, just sort of bounced off people was because it sounded like scaremongering because it wasn't evidenced. It was just saying, if, you, if we vote to leave, it'll cost us this many jobs or this much growth or you'll be this much worse off. Well, why will I? And people said they were crying out to hear from the experts. So from business leaders to economists, scientists to defence chiefs, they all spoke for themselves and the weight of expert opinion was overwhelming. The consequences would be negative if the UK was to leave the European Union. Material slowdown in growth, notable increase in inflation, that's the MPC's judgment. In a sense, we were the victims of our own success in the early parts of the campaign because we landed our economic message like an atomic weapon. We pushed the Leave campaign from Norway to Canada to Albania and then finally pushed them entirely off the single market. Of course, what it meant is that that was the moment when they decided to adopt Nigel Farage's approach to this referendum and to make it all about immigration. Imagine what will happen to public services when Albania, Macedonia... When I first saw their PPB, the one with all the arrows implying that millions and millions of people from all sorts of countries, including Turkey and possibly some other countries that aren't in the EU, are going to come uh, and move to Britain. When I showed that to focus groups, it was very powerful. Um, because it, it captured the anxiety and fear and emotion people have at the prospect of being overwhelmed and flooded and overrun. And, and these are all terms that I would hear in focus groups. And I knew that that PPP and the literature that was used uh, off the back of it was very powerful. Um, I also knew, of course, that it was purposefully choosing xenophobia, uh, indeed racism. So we always knew that immigration was a problem. And it was in this room, around this table, that lots of the discussions were had. Some wondered, was there more we could do to get EU leaders to say something, to show more flexibility on free movement, maybe? But to others, that meant fighting the rest of the campaign on immigration, when we needed for it to be back on the economy. If you could solve the problem of free movement, it would have been right to move on to immigration. If you can't solve the problem of free movement, Moving on to immigration might just make things worse, not better. Of course, it's a counterfactual. We don't know. But given what we did know, it made sense to stick to the economy. But it became clear that for some people, that economic risk didn't mean anything. I spoke to one man uh, in my constituency who was out one day and he gave me his view of this. He was voting to leave because of all those concerns about immigration in his eyes. And when I said to him, I understand your your concerns about that. What do you think about the argument that leaving would be bad for our economy? And he said, what do I care about the economy? I'm a single man with a dog. There are lots of people in Britain who do feel passed over, forgotten, left behind. They don't see what the future could possibly hold for them or their children. And they're very angry. Um, and this referendum was a chance to attach that anger to the EU. 
Um, and we realised that really very early on. Shouldn't Labour have been able to reach out to those voters? The brutal truth of the matter is the leader of the Labour Party did not campaign with authenticity, passion, conviction or clarity from day one. He simply didn't. He said he was for Remain, but it was on quite a narrow basis and I think there was a lot missing in terms of what the broader argument could be and you know, polling took place during the campaign that showed half our voters didn't even know that our official position was for Remain. Uh, so I think more could have been done, yes. And whether it was true or not, the Leave campaign was determined to use just one number. The power of their 350 million a week can't be overstated. I mean, in the focus groups, it's quite unusual for, for, for floating voters who aren't very interested in politics to have internalised a, a campaign fact or number that it comes out spontaneously, and it did. And when in focus group we would say, but have you also noticed there's been a debate about some people saying that isn't actually true? People say, well, oh, vaguely, but you know, it's still a very big number, isn't it? Good evening. In the final debate, just days before the vote, the Leave campaign came armed with their catch-all phrase to solve any problem. Taking back control of our country and our system. Vote Leave and take back control. We can take back control over our laws. We can take back control over our taxes. We can take back control over our borders, immigration policy and security. They were being presented with a very simple solution, which was, if, if you think this is a really serious problem, if you think the pressure of migration is putting, causing these problems with our public services and, and jobs, to, we take back control. And, and what we had, I mean, the way I would put it is, you know, we had a, a complex truth up against an, a simple lie, and, and we see what happened. And what happened will be talked about for decades. Though we'd built the biggest ever cross-party, cross-sector campaign with over 40,000 volunteers, we didn't win the day. This was a campaign where experts were dismissed and conventional wisdom thrown out of the window. Many doubt if campaigns will ever be the same again. And Matthew Elliott from Vote Leave will be looking at how their campaign won the referendum on the daily politics. Well, Isabel, having looked at that and seen what they are now saying, I've now found myself surprised that Remain lost by only four percentage points. Right. I mean, the bottom line is that their big argument on the economy, they went grossly over the top right at the beginning. They tried to create what pollsters call a settled view, which then becomes very difficult to dislodge. But in doing so, they went so far over the top that their claims became unbelievable. And simply adding more experts to it got no response whatsoever from the electorate. And secondly, and perhaps more importantly, they simply had no answer on the immigration question. And I think that the majority of people who voted leave, whether or not they would like to admit it, were in their heart of hearts voting so because of immigration and Remain had no answer on that. Um, you didn't have to be a rocket scientist or even a sophologist to work out that immigration was going to be the big issue for the Leave people. We knew that. We've spoken on this program months before the campaign began about that. And yet, even by the end of the campaign, they still had no answer to the immigration issue. Yeah, and basically that's the legacy of, of years and years of British politics where no one will make a po either a positive case, a straightforwardly positive case for immigration, or a case for the trade-off that you make, a case for you saying we accept immigration because of the economic benefits. And I think their economic argument failed because people didn't feel that all these years of prosperity in the City of London mm -hmm. had had any translation to the real economy. So when you said well, it would be terrible for the City of London, people thought, mm -hmm. What's that got to do with me? Yes, whatever. Yeah. Uh, to quote Mr. Blair in a different context. Was there anything Remain could have done to have won? I think a different renegotiation mm. in January, February by the Prime Minister, mm. which secured some tangible concession on free movement, would have won it for them, actually. I, I agree with Isabel that the, the decisive margin were voters who were reasonable people but wanted some sense of control over immigration, didn't feel they were getting it, mm. and therefore... In many ways, as interesting as that video was, it wasn't the internal dynamics of a campaign that was at fault. The reason they didn't have an answer is that Cameron didn't come back from Brussels and Berlin with something solid so, on, free, so on free movement. It was Angela Merkel. What lost it? 
Well, yes, and I'm sure that she's now bitterly regretting not giving Cameron something. But I think the other thing is that I know that when the Strong Green campaign had their very early meetings, before the campaign officially began, mm. they had a discussion, can we identify five positive things about being in the EU that we can sell to mm. voters? And they couldn't come up with any. And that was again part of the problem that they did totally fail to put a positive case it was just the project fear Very but I think it was also David Cameron what lost it because for years to get elected in the Tory party to get selected yeah. you had to say we were a skeptic yes. he then had a career where he kept saying actually it won't be a big problem if we leave to then pivot and say actually the sky will fall in it kind of the, the, a lot of voters concluded isn't that just typical of the political yeah, elite you're just making it up as you go along exactly.